Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, listen. It's been a minute, okay? This is just, you know, a little chit-chat, okay? Time for us to talk and discuss and get into the team. I have not been able to get back up here and talk to you guys about this since about three weeks ago when I talked about episodes one and two. And I wanted you guys' opinion, all right? On what you are thinking about Zatima so far, right? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is there things you would change? Do you think it's perfect? And then, you know what I'm saying, it needs to stay the same. Um, how are you liking the flow? How are you liking um, the storylines? You know, let's get into it. Let's talk about it all. Put it in the comments, okay? As far as me, I wanted to give you guys some of my thoughts. I have been watching, okay? And ooh, I got some thoughts now. I got some thoughts. All right. And I wanted to just kind of recap these episodes. All right. Um, first off, my first thing just off the back is where did they find these friends? Where did y'all get these friends? OK, um, we don't want friends that want our lives. We don't want friends that's jealous, that's envious. You know what I'm saying? That is trying to um, give us that jealousy vibe and take our men and all of that kind of stuff. We don't play that up and around here, okay? That is a no for me, dog, okay? So that's the first thing right off the back that sticks in my daggone mind, child. Um, I don't know what drink we need today. We, you know, we might have to bring it all out. We need the coffee. We need the tea. We need the cocoa and we might need some hard liquor up in here too. <laughs> but, um, guys, I'm going to try to, you know, I honestly don't know what this video is going to be as far as, you know, am I doing three separate videos? Am I doing two videos? Am I doing one long video? Because I know that I'm far behind. You know, things have just been crazy. Your girl was down and out feeling sick. I really wanted to do this on Monday and I was sick as a dog, so I didn't get to do it. So I'm just jumping up here. This is kind of just a freestyle. Your guess is as good as mine, the way it's going to go, honey. You know, we will figure it out as we go, but let's go ahead and get into it because I did take all these notes over these last couple of weeks and I was watching and it is something that I wanted to talk about. So as far as the team goes, right? Like I said, I did episodes one and two like three weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that, you know, go ahead and check it out. Um, so I'm going to pick up with three and four from here, right? Three was off limits and four was to tell the truth. And of course, we have started out with three. Now, one thing I will say also is that I do like how the dialogue is not as much of the back and forth. We get straight to the point. We flow. We go from like one episode ending to the next episode, starting right off, continuing from where we left off and getting to the meat and bones and potatoes and all of that good stuff. So that is a plus. OK, I will say that. And I think I had, you know, pretty much said something similar when he, when I first watched one and two. So with this one, Zach finally had his SEC meeting, right? He met with the lady. She was being real nasty, real bitchy, real arrogant, calling him a liar, all that different kind of stuff. You know, she had brought up the senator's wife and he was like, look, you know, she trying to show him a pic from when they was in the airport. He like, listen, I see a lot of people at the airport. I deal with a lot of people that don't mean nothing. You know, I still don't remember her. I still don't know who, he, what, who she is. He stuck to his story, stuck to his guns, said everything that Bryce had been teaching him. And no matter what he was saying, she still pretty much was calling him a liar, saying she don't like liars. You know, at one point she tried to say she had some police waiting outside and she was opening the door talking about, come on, get in here and get him. And he was like, um, I'm waiting where they at. Right. So long story short, she wasn't able to prove anything, but she pretty much was like, I'm still going to have my eye on you. And this still could come back around because it's still something fishy here, even though I'm not finding no evidence or nothing. So finally, we got the ASEC case shut. You know, we probably will not hear anything about it, at least for now, whether it's on Zatima or Sisters. Great, because I was kind of tired and over that. Right. And then we basically had, you know, um. 
Fatima come home and he was like asking her, you still mad? You know, she was saying her feet hurt. She had a long day. She was tired. He was rubbing her feet, asking her what else she got planned for the day. She was saying she was going to go to this beauty parlor, get her hair done. And he was like, OK, well, I'm going to go jogging with Bryce. And she's like, oh, boy, Bryce, you know, and he's basically like, you still don't like him. You should really give him a chance. He's the one that helped me. He's the one that told me everything to do as far as this SEC thing and helped me get past it. And she's like, you know, I'm going to try to give him a chance. But her, you know, senses is tingling and she not trusting Bryce. And we're not really trusting him either because we don't trust people that we don't know like that. Right. And I've already mentioned that Bryce is literally the remake of Daggone Jake. OK, they could have just brung Jake over here from Sisters and threw him in because it's really the same storyline. Jake was always being helpful to Zach, trying to, you know, offer him information as far as the investigation paying up stuff, offering money or whatever and saying, don't worry about it. Get it back to me when you can. And we get in the exact same story when it comes to Bryce. And he just so happens to work for Gary as well, just like Jake did. So, I mean, literally the same character, just a <laughs> different tag on, you know, uh, race or ethnicity or whatever. Right. And so basically him and Bryce go for this jog and they end up where is this house at? And Zach is saying how he really want to buy this house. He actually wants to start flipping, you know, um, houses and getting more properties and stuff like that, renting the mountains and different things like that. And Bryce is like, wow, that would be great. I could help you with that. He just so happens to know, you know, the realtor. So now that's another connection and another way that he could supposedly help him. Um, you know, Zach also says like, is Gary at the office now? Can we go by and look at it? And, you know, he starts to talk about how he would like to eventually own his own space and, or rent out his space and, you know, build up this business. And Bryce has the connections for that, right? He's telling him he knows places that's cheaper that he probably could help him to do that. Right. And Zach is just thanking him and saying how, you know, he's been such a friend. He's so great. He really appreciates him and all of that kind of stuff. And so then we get, you know, him coming back home and Fatima coming in. And now it's time for Miss Heather to come on over with the baby. Now, mind you, she trying to get Zach to hold this daggone baby. And he like, nah, I'm good. And Fatima's like, oh, I'll hold him. Why are you acting like that? So I was like wondering why, you know, Fatima was being so friendly about it. Now, in the meantime, they trying to get, of course, this paternity test done. And Heather's just playing around, child. She over here talking about, you know, no, you're not going to get it until I get, you know, the child support money. And I'm like, girl, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Of course, Zach is standing there, you know, arguing back and forth with him or whatever, with her rather, I should say, right? And then Fatima just kind of gives her the baby and they like, okay, girl, bye. And in the meantime, he's like, well, now how are we going to get this paternity test done? And Fatima's like, boy, I already did it. He was like, what? And she was like, yeah, come to find out. That's why she was asking to hold the baby. She don't swab the baby and she's on, you know, her game or whatever. Right. And so he was like, oh, I knew that's what you was doing and trying to play it off. And he's just like, you know, my baby is so smart or whatever. You know, she done took care of that part. So now we are waiting just to get the results, which I highly doubt that this daggone baby is his. But we shall see. We don't know which way, you know, Mr. Tyler is going to spin it. And so, you know, Fatima gets to this hair salon and this is when they started losing me. Uh, OK, the people in the hair salon is basically gossiping. They throw in shade, you know, Belinda's there and she apologizes again and she basically leaves. And then Angela's there and is just like, no, don't talk to her about it. Don't say this. Don't say that. Right. Just let her get her hair done and leave. And my whole thing is if I'm somewhere and people are gossiping about my daggone friend, first of all, I'm going to put them in a daggone place. And then I'm not going to be trying to be like, Shh, no, don't tell her nothing about it when she gets there. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I wasn't really feeling that. And then they go above and beyond to keep saying to her like, oh, that girl is really hurt talking about Belinda. You know, she really had feelings for Zach. She really was taking it serious. You know, that don't make you feel no kind of way that her and Zach had interacted before and that they had a history. And, you know, Fatima's pretty much like, no, that was before me. OK, that don't got nothing to do with me. That was before I knew him him in that way or whatever the case may be it would be different if you know we was with him at the same time or 
you know, she was doing something with him behind my back or I was doing something with, you know, him behind her back, but it wasn't that type of situation. And we're both in a different place now and things of that nature. And at the same time, they going on and on and on about it. So now you can see the wheels turning and, you know, for team ahead. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, Zach meets this realtor that um Bryce had told her about, right? Ended up that her name was Valerie and she's first outside looking, you know, at the place and she's saying how she want to meet Zach. But of course, Zach done been having all these different people looking for him. So he's skeptical. He don't know who she is at first. So they both was kind of throwing shade at each other. I like their interaction. Then he realizes that she's the realtor. You know, her name is Valerie and he starts calling her Shady Val. He shows her the place and she's like, wow, this is really nice. You sure you don't want to give up this one, though? You know, kind of like like in his place that he's living in. And he's like, nah, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? Nothing that I'm trying to give up. I just put all this work into it and this is for me and my lady to live in. And so, you know, she's saying she can help him and she can definitely get the place, you know, next door. Um, Next door, I should say, rent it out to somebody, right? And she gives him his card and stuff. So as she's leaving, Miss Belinda pops up, okay? And he's basically like, Fatima ain't home. She's like, oh, I know she's at the beauty parlor, you know? And I know how long it takes her to get her hair done and how long it's going to be. And she's more than likely underneath the dryer. And she starts jumping all around, all on top of him and trying to kiss him and stuff like that and saying, yeah, we could get into it now. And, you know, she knows her schedule and don't worry about it. And he's literally yelling and saying, you know, get off of me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Trying to twist her this way, twist her that way, throw her this way, throw her that way. And she just keeps holding on to him. And I'm like, really, this is what we going to do. This is what we going to do. And mind you, I didn't trust um, Belinda from the last conversation that her and Fatima had at the end of episode two. And I'm just paraphrasing because I really can't remember it off the top of my head. But I remember even saying it in my last recap where I was like, when she said to Fatima, like, oh, don't worry about it. I don't even want him no more. Something along them lines. It didn't run me the right way. I was like, why would you need to say that? Like, y'all had already apologized. Y'all already talked. And it also was really just crazy as hell that her and Karen supposedly had met because she went there to approach Karen after he didn't want anything to do with her, but then continued to have this relationship with Karen and supposedly have made that her place where she was then going to get her hair done. Like, girl, what? So her and Karen are special in my opinion, right? And it's like, you're mad now that your friend is happy with somebody that you couldn't be happy with. And you was just saying what a big dog he was, but you want this dog too, right? You want to take him from your friend. I'm confused. You wasn't never a friend to begin with. And I really want to know how long was the relationship supposed to be between her and Fatima? Like, where we do this at? And so nonetheless, he's steadily trying to fight her off or whatever the case may be. And then he's going up the stairs and he's saying, don't follow me. Now, as we go into episode four, honey, well, actually, as we end off episode three, before we get into four, Fatima's upstairs sitting on that bed, child. Her hair is pinned up. She done left that daggone beauty parlor early and was waiting right in there for them and had heard every last word. So he's like, oh, shit, when he gets to the top of those stairs. OK, now. We continue and we get into episode four and he's already upstairs and Belinda's still walking up, shirt all open, talking her mess or whatever. And then when she sees Fatima, she's like, girl, I can explain. What can you explain? There's nothing to explain. She literally sat here and heard every daggone thing that you did. She trying to flip it and say, you know, I wanted to show you what a dog he was. I'm helping you. You know, I was just going to come right back and tell you what was going down and let you know that he's trash and that type of thing or whatever. Right. And Zach is literally telling her like, girl, get the heck up out of here. And he's telling Fatima, calm down. It's like Zach is more aware of Fatima and you know what's gonna piss her off and what her reaction is gonna be what's the next thing she gonna do then Belinda so then I again ask how long have y'all been friends because if you know Fatima you know certain things she ain't gonna be playing with and he could see the look in her eyes and see that she just sitting there quiet and is like 
that's when you got to be even more worried when a person is quiet than if they going off child and he's literally telling her like I'm trying to help you you need to go and she talking about some get off of me you ain't helping me and you don't know nothing how can you possibly help me and Fatima girl da, 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 da. and the next thing you know he had tried to grab that pocketbook because we all know she keep that po that gun in that pocketbook child but even when he had grabbed it, she had already done dipped in that thing and took, you know, took the gun. And so the next thing you know, she basically takes it out and starts to shoot. You know, it actually could have hit Belinda or Zach at that point. And then Zach goes and holds her down and telling her to stop and telling her to calm down. And he's telling, you know, basically, um telling Belinda to get the hell up out of there and Belinda still talking about girl what you doing what you doing you you you, you didn't understand you didn't understand you didn't see her with the gun shooting at you what you think she's doing what part of this was confusing to you girl like less talking more running than getting your behind up out the house now in the meantime and Angela ends up coming looking for Tima you know Zach gets her to calm down he gets her to lay down you know he's in the kitchen making something and when he's hearing the knock and he like now who the hell is this okay I'm tired of everybody popping up and he's at first telling Angela like no you can't see her she's sleeping it took forever to get her to calm down we just gonna let her relax I'm not letting anybody that's you know coming in that's gonna hurt her whatever the case may be because I don't know what y'all got going on and Angela's like, listen, I'm going upstairs and I'm going to talk to my friend or whatever. You're going to get the hell up out of my way. She like, yeah, I heard what happened or whatever. And so, of course, Fatima says, go ahead and let her up. You know, she's telling um, Zach, you could go and talk to Bryce in the car. And he's like, Bryce is here too. Like, you know, I ain't asked to talk to him. And at this point, Brock, Bryce knocks at the door and says, can he come in? And he's asking Zach, do he want to talk? And he's like, no, but I guess I don't got no choice at this point. And he offers you know, Bryce a drink and Angela comes up and she's like, oh, well, Belinda told me what happened. And she was like, you know, Fatima's like, yeah, can you believe that? And I would never mess with her again. You know, she hurt me so bad and this and that. And Angela was like, well, are you sure, girl? What exactly are you thinking it happened? Because from what Belinda said to me, you know, he came on to her and she was just trying to let you know and show you that he wasn't for you and that, you know, he basically would get down with her and all of that type of stuff. And she was like, the way she told me the story was believable. So now you got me giving you the side eye too, Angela. Okay. I'm kind of 50, 50 when it comes to you, because she's saying they've been friends for a long time. And Fatima's basically like, she's dead to me. And Angela's like, no, don't say that. And she was like, well, she was almost dead, you know, because I heard you out here pulling out guns, shooting at people. And basically Fatima was saying you know she wanted her dead and she would have been if she wanted her dead she would have been that was a warning shot okay she was like you girl you already know I don't miss if I don't want to and she was like well you're angry right now and when you are angry you could do you know crazy things and you'll basically regret it later or whatever right when it really reality sets in and that's true at the end of the day I wouldn't have wanted you know Fatima to kill the girl and I wouldn't have wanted her to be in jail okay that's not what we want but if this is your friend and if you're friends with both of them, and that's why I'm saying, what's the dynamic? What is their friendship? How long have they been friends? And what exactly do they supposed to know about each other? Because at least when it comes to sisters, we kind of know that Andy and um Karen are the closer ones and Danny and Sabrina are the closer ones. Right. But then they all kind of hang with each other. And so the Angela know. Fatima first or did she know you know Belinda first because we could have different friends right a friend from work a friend from school a friend we grew up with from high school a friend we grew up from you know all the way before elementary or do during elementary and you're gonna have different dynamics with each of those friends and be with you know friends with them for different reasons and I get not wanting to be the middleman or not wanting to take a side but I'm also a person that was wrong as wrong period point blank and I'm also a person that Normally, if you've been with friends for friends with somebody for that many years, you kind of know how they get down. You know the things they would do and you know the things that they wouldn't do. And so for Angela to sit there and be like, well, you sure you're not bugging? You sure you didn't understand, you know, what exactly was happening and you're not taking it the wrong way? Because Angela was being real believable. I was like, girl, I would have kicked your behind out if you would have came to me telling me some crap like that. And I'm literally telling you like, no, I know what I said seen and I know what I heard I was already up here and I was listening to the whole thing 
Now, in the meantime, Bryce is asking Zach if he's okay, and he says no. You know, he's asking him what really happened, and they go ahead and they talk about it or whatever, right? And Bryce was also like, you're not scared having a gun around? He's like, nah, you know, I'm used to that. And Bryce was like, oh, well, you know, I'm not used to stuff like that. That would make me worried. That would make me scared. You know, at this point, Angela gets back down there. She's finished talking with Fatima. They go ahead to leave. And Zach just kind of goes up there and checks on her and is telling her that he don't want to cause her no pain or hurt. He's sorry that all of this is happening. She's basically like, you know, it's not your fault. And, you know, he basically prom he's trying to tell her to promise to stop, you know, pulling out guns every minute. And she's like, listen, I'll try. He's like, that didn't sound too convincing. OK. And he was like, and how the hell did you get in here anyway? She talking about she came through the window. He was like, how the hell is that possible? OK, we don't got no daggone ladders or nothing like that. And she was like, baby, I grew wings when I got mad. OK. And so Zach basically, you know, um is making breakfast right we get into that next morning and he calls up valerie and she's saying that you know she has someone to lease the place and he's like wow that fast she was like yeah whatever so when fatima comes down you know he was gonna try to make her breakfast and stuff like that but she like nah i need to get out i need to leave i need to do a workout i need to kind of relieve this stress you know one way or another so he was like i'll go with you she like nah you run too damn slow okay or you gonna do a slow me up and he's like nah i promise i'll keep up with you he was like you know i'll just go ahead and cover up this food and you know we could go ahead and do that. And he was like, you know, saying that he could take her to Florida. She was like, nah, I want to go to Bahamas or France. But he was basically like, you know, I can't do that right now because I can't get the whole passport thing going on right now because of my record. And she was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Well, you could still send me, you know, I thought that was funny. And so Zach basically, of course, didn't keep up with her. He was way behind and in pain and all of that kind of stuff. And she was like, see, that's why I was telling you not to come. But nonetheless, they go for this run and then she's saying that, you know, she was going to go ahead and um, get ready for work and stuff like that. Right. But she ends up bumping into this ex Ian. OK. And he's over here, like still trying to stand in her way, be like, oh, I still love you and all this. And she's like, uh, well, you wasn't loving me when you left me to go get married. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be the following weekend. And after you left me and he's basically saying that he kicks himself for that, you know, he blames himself for that and he can explain and all of this stuff. And she's like, it's nothing to explain. I moved on. I'm happy, whatever. So in the meantime, Zach was actually still standing there that whole time talking to you know, Bryce on the phone about some business because he was saying that he had a location that, you know, he wanted Zach to come and look at. And he like, OK, cool. So when he hangs up, he's noticing that Fatima is still standing in in this conversation. So, of course, he comes running up and she introduces them or whatever and Zach is like oh okay yeah I heard about you and she was like yeah he was just asking me if I could go out to dinner and Zach was like yeah nah we ain't doing that you know and he's smacking from team on the buck or whatever and saying you know we good and stuff like that and they basically go ahead um you know about their business so I don't know if Fatima and Angela are supposed to work at the same location or a really close location Bob but she comes by the office to see her they talk and she catches her up on the fact that she's seen Ian and that, you know, she kind of had these feelings come fluttering back that she wasn't expecting to have and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And that he asked her to meet up with him to talk and stuff like that. Right. And, um, Zach friends basically call him about a party and they're saying, you know, you're going to come out with us tonight and you're going to party. And he's telling them, no, you know, at the same time, Fatima gets called up front to find out that Ian Dunn came to her damn job. I said, well, damn, how he's stalking her, you know, and finding every damn place she worked. Wait a minute, y'all. <coughs> Okay, so now we get to episodes five and six, right? Five was the element of six is cutting ties. So Zach basically meets, well, no, I'm sorry. Before that child, when Ian came to Fatima's job, right? Supposedly, 
the whole thing with Mr. Ian is that he has cancer, right? So he say, and he's dying in stage four. And he want to make amends and talk to everybody that he's done wrong to. And she is definitely one of the top people. You know, he wanted her to go ahead and meet him at this daggone diner and sit down and have a conversation with him there, right? In the meantime, Zach had met with Deja and she comes, you know, to see the house or whatever. And it's kind of the same scenario, right? She's out there. She's asking, you know, who's Zach? And he's like, who wants to know? And they go with this whole back and forth. They flirting real hard and extra. And when she finally realizes that he is Zach, she's like, you know, who are you running from? And he was like saying, no one is just a lot that goes on around here. And she's like, oh, well, do I really want to move in here? And then, you know, do stuff be happening? He like, nah, 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 not in that way. You good, you know? And they go in to see the place. She's like, it's a little dusty in here. But other than that, it's good. And like I said, again, they're flirting. Zach is being real extra acting like, oh, my God, you know. He acting like he basically want to get with her or something. So I'm like, Zach, slow down. Okay, what is going on here? Is this the Zach that, you know, Karen basically was complaining about that we see in here? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, she's super happy when she finds out that he would be the landlord and he would be living that right next door because he's strong and he could come over and fix things and do different things. And she asking him, when she can move in and he's like you know you gotta go ahead and give me your paperwork and you know go through everything and see what's gonna be what now in the meantime his friends done showed up so three and four we was kind of getting to see what the friendships are with Fatima her friends five and six were getting to see the friendships with him and his friends and so I don't like them either I'm like, where did we find these people at? What is going on? Because even when in one and two, we see that the friend Tony, I think it is, or is it the other way around? No, the friend Nathan is married, but obviously unhappily married with children. And it seems like he wants to live vicariously through Zach. It seems to me like he wants Zach to be single and he want to be able to hang out with Zach and party with Zach and have fun with Zach. Like... He has a regret of getting married, and he just seems really, really extra to me, right? Initially, it was him and Tony both that was being super extra, and I was like, okay, we need to have at least one or the other. Both is a bit much for me. So now when Zach is walking out with the girl, Deja, they're over the top, you know, flirting with her, just going mad hard. They're all like, oh my God, Zach, this is your place and this is how you doing it. And, you know, they're happy for him as friends, of course, and saying, wow, you really doing the glow up, blow up. You know, we also hear mention of Zach's brother and saying, did you tell him? Oh, well, I'm going to have to call him and tell him what's going on. He would be so proud of you. And Zach is like, I'm sure we found out that they haven't spoken I think it was like these last three years or whatever, right? And so he's telling him, nah, chill. I don't need you to call my brother. I'll eventually call him and I'll let him know and all of that kind of stuff. Obviously, the relationship is not that great if he's saying that. Now, they blocking her car. So, you know, Nathan basically, um, I think, was the one that had to go and move the car out the way. But it's like they was just acting so thirsty. And then when they get in the house, you would think, like, you don't got no home training. You never been nowhere before. You never seen nobody have a daggone place before. It was, like, real childish to me. I don't know. Over the top. And it was kind of irking my nerves, to be honest. But Nathan wants to get in the jacuzzi. And he's literally stripping off all his clothes, you know. But birthday suit basically and Zach is running upstairs like don't get in it don't get in it. and I'm gonna go get you some shorts you know Tony say he gonna go and get them drinks and that you know they gonna just basically get messed up until it's time to go to the party and Zach is still saying look I ain't going to no damn party and he's basically also saying you know y'all could chill for a minute but y'all gonna have to get the heck up out of here because at one point he even calls to check on Fatima and she's sounding really out of it he could pick up on it immediately but she He's telling him she's going to talk to him about it when he get home. So he's like, all right, as a matter of fact, you know, my friends was here. But because I hear you sounding like this, I'm going to make sure they get the heck up out of here. Right. Fine. Cool. 
So Tony leaves to go get the drinks. You got Fatima, Angela meeting again in the garage. You know, they talk about Ian and the cancer. And it was interesting to me that Angela was like, girl, are you sure? We know that he'd be lying about some things. And she was like, yeah, but I don't think he would lie, you know, about something like that. And she also was telling her, like, I think you might want to tell Zach about this, girl. Now, I did agree with her there. And so nonetheless, Fatima goes, you know, to meet him there right um after Angela had got this call from Bryce where they're being all lovey-dovey and she's like oh y'all on that level already where y'all saying I love you and all that she's like yeah girl he's just great right and so um when she goes to meet Ian we find out a little bit more right Ian basically broke up with this daggone girl supposedly right um or he supposedly he had told Fatima that, but that was a lie. He actually was still with her the whole time. It seemed like he was kind of using her because her family came from money and he wanted them to help, you know, him get on his feet and get where he wanted to be. So obviously Ian was an all around asshole. He was an asshole to Fatima and to this girl apparently, right? And this, I would look at it like this is Fatima's act to how Karen was... Karen felt with Zach, right? Which is why when Fatima talked about it with um Karen so long ago, she basically was like, Girl, I get it. I understand where you where you coming from. I've been there before, right? We also found out that she had got an abortion or whatever, right? Before. And so and this was his. And so it's just basically like you know, you put me through a whole bunch, right? But he's apologizing and saying how he wanted to get out there and test the waters. This is why he did all the different stuff that he did. And obviously the waters wasn't what he was expecting, child. And the grass is not always greener on the other side, as they say, right? But he really took the cake for me when he going to talk about some, can you look out for my mom? Because she was saying, you know, how's your mom doing? And he was like, oh, she was always, you know, so in love with you and liked you the best out of everybody. And I know y'all had a close relationship. So he likes saying when he's gone, he wanted to know if she could still just watch out for her and see how she's doing. And I was like, that's not her responsibility. Like, boy, are you crazy? You know. But anyway, you know. um. And he gets down on his knees to apologize. She's like telling him, don't do all of that. And so she had to tell him, like, I'm sorry you sick. I wouldn't wish that on nobody. You know, I don't want to see you in pain. I don't want to see you suffering sick. God forbid dying or any of that. But at the end of the day, I still don't want to be bothered with you. Like, I don't want no parts of it whatsoever. I'm happy now. And at one point, he was basically like, oh, does he make you as happy as me even when I was like at my best or happiest and she was like yeah because every time you made me happy you basically made me sad right behind it it would always be some foolishness right behind it right but they was able to get that closure she said her peace he said his peace they hugged and lo and behold you know of course um Zach friend Tony is coming back from the damn store sees them and gets a picture of them hugging so now at this point you know, Valerie comes in with the update on Deja saying all her paperwork was good and all that stuff. And she has her info, you know, Nathan coming in all wet from the damn jacuzzi to try to rap to her too. Everybody that come, he want to try to rap to them. She ain't paying them no damn mind. She actually ends up thinking that him and Zach are lovers and they like, oh, hell no. You know, what makes you think that? Nah, we, we ain't lovers, right? And it's like, besides the fact that he coming in here soaking wet, hugging up on you, Zach, you know. And then um, Tony comes in and he shows Nathan the picture first, which I don't even know why he would do this. But then like saying, don't say nothing about it. Knowing daggone well, he going to say something about it. And so when they first meet Fatima and she's coming in after, they're throwing words now because they're looking at her in a certain way or because of him being able to see this pic and take this picture. And she's kind of looking at them like, OK, I don't know what's going on. You know, she's still out of it from the whole Ian situation. So she just trying to go upstairs and she's telling Zach like you know go out go be with your friends you haven't been with them a minute enjoy yourself whatever right and so then you know after a whole bunch of back and forth between Zach and his friends and him being like you know what's really going on with y'all because he was like no nah, I'm not going with y'all y'all go ahead or whatever I'm gonna stay here it's like bam you know shows him the picture of Fatima and Ian together and Zach is just like and then they like, yeah, exactly, right? And so, of course, um, 
when we get to episode six, Tony is asking if he's good and Zach is telling him to leave and Nathan is trying to like break them up or whatever because they really having a big back and forth. And so Tony basically, you know, tries to calm down the situation and whatever and say thank you, thank before you react, right? And I did appreciate him at least saying that because like I said, even Tony previous episodes was kind of like what the heck and then in six he more so was to me trying to be the level-headed one think logically you know and kind of be an in-between so he says um you know y'all really need to go ahead and have this discussion and you know i'm saying all of that kind of stuff and so Zach decides that he is going to go and he gets out the shower. Fatima's in the tub and Zach is kind of questioning her, trying to see if she would tell him about what happened at the coffee shop. Right. And at first, of course, Fatima tries to lie and this pisses him off. And, you know, he's now wanting to kind of get revenge to a certain degree. Right. Like now I'm going to show my behind because I feel like you lied to me at first and you didn't tell me the whole story and that type of thing. Right. And so he go ahead and leaves to go to the party and Fatima, you know, basically calls Angela to come over, you know, her, um, Angela and Bryce are vibing at first. He's going back and forth with her saying how beautiful she is and all of this different kind of stuff when she gets the call from Fatima and then Zach goes to the party, you know, they dancing, they wilding out, they chilling, whatever have you. And Nathan basically says, cheers to Zach, right? saying like it's good you left Fatima and you got rid of her and all of that excuse me kind of stuff and that's where I get irritated at again because I'm like uh who's happy that you're sad who's happy that you know something is making you miserable it just doesn't come off as genuine it's one thing if you're looking out for a friend and you just really don't want them to be with somebody that you feel hurt them and disrespected them I get it but even before he knew anything or thought he knew anything, but he still don't have the full story. He's just assuming you basically have been being a hater. It's just like you want him to not have somebody. And that part, I'm just not fully understanding why you would celebrate that. And then they end up seeing Heather Day at the party. I said, everybody named mothers at this damn party, huh? Okay, of course, they always say in this such a small town, right? And, you know, Angela calls Bryce because of Zach and Fatima's fight and Bryce is saying he'll call and talk to him you know Jack was a Zach was initially leaving the party right and then he gets the call from Bryce and they start talking or whatever and they say they're gonna meet at this diner but of course as Zach is walking out he all of a sudden bumps into you know Miss Deja who just so happens to be there too and she's like saying what you doing here and he's saying well I was about to leave this not really my scene and then she says yeah well I'm here for work and he was like oh I thought I saw something about you being a server and she's like oh that's my day job you know but I do this at night okay she does dancing so this is why she's there at the party you know she's a technician in the day one of the best in the city apparently and so basically she's like you're not gonna come back in and she's doing this whole you know flirting thing with him again and bending over and doing all this other extra stuff giving him all these looks of course and so she was like you're not gonna judge me and this is not gonna mess me up with the apartment and none of that right and then all of a sudden randomly he's able to give her the keys and all of that and say everything went through that was kind of weird to me but I'm like okay and so nonetheless he goes back in with her they start dancing or she dance, starts dancing on him you know his friends is all hyped and happy to see her dancing on him and Nathan came over at one point was even trying to do the same dance as her or whatever I don't know child and so you know we have Fatima and Angela talking and Jeremiah comes to the door and we find out that Jeremiah is basically Zach's brother. You know, he's asking Fatima, like, who the hell are you? Because they haven't met or spoken anything, apparently. And so now I would assume that um, Nathan didn't listen when Zach was like, don't call him. Called him anyway and he's letting her know to mention to Zach that, you know... He wants him to hit him up and hit the mother up and all of that stuff and that he was there. And so we're getting him in the picture now, okay? And Zach is twisted. Zach done got twisted as hell and 
Remember him and Bryce was supposed to meet at the diner. So at this point, he comes looking for him. Zach ain't even got no daggone shirt on. He trying to find out where the shirt is at. He's telling him he had enough. It's time for him to go. You know, whereas Nathan and Tony are still trying to get him to be there. And this is again where I question, what is this friendship that we have going on? Okay. But Bryce does get him out of there. And he's, you know taking him back to the house or whatever case and I guess they did find the shirt because you know at first um Fatima talks um to Angela about you know what he said about the mom and all of that and she's like I don't want no parts because his mom had even ended up calling at one point and Angela saying well you know she did love you girl okay you was one of her faves and she's like yeah but you know they were saying that she didn't even go to the wedding because of how disappointed she was in, you know, Ian and how much the mother actually wanted him to marry Fatima and all of that. And she was like, that's her only child. And I know that's killing her and that's hard for her. And so they start talking about all of that and they get this text from Belinda. And so now Fatima was like, oh, Lord, I forgot to block this girl like I need to block her. But in the meantime, once Fatima ain't paying no mind, she sends the same text to Angela and of course Angela don't got no poker face for Tima can see something is going on she knows her facial expressions and all of that stuff when she lies so she's like let me see what the heck is going on and then basically when she sees it of course it's the picture of Zach with the daggone girl and she's basically like oh hell no okay <laughs> So that is basically y'all uh, episodes three through six. This is already a 40 minute video. So I think I'm going to do a separate video for seven and eight. And we are going to continue the discussion. But in the meantime, you know, put it in the comments. Let me know um, what y'all think about this so far. Like I said, what are y'all opinions of these dynamics that we are getting with these daggone friends out here, child? Okay, what about your friends? <laughs> okay, what is going on? You know, let's discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. All right, y'all. <laughs>